Yeah, this idea that uh, trying to reduce demand is impotent in the face of centuries old consumption habits just does not hold water. The fact is that societies are dynamic, Consu consumption is dynamic, it's something that changes, and consumer tastes and preferences change all the time. You cannot hide behind this line that the consumption of rhino horn is some kind of cultural heritage that we can never move away from. We didn't move away from the Stone Age because we ran out of stones. We didn't stop slavery because it was somehow economical to do so. It, no, we, we took decisions on the grounds of what was morally correct. Um, and similarly with rhino horn, you must understand that there is variation in the market and different types of products consumed differently in different places with different price elasticities. In other words, different sensitivities in the consumer market to changes in price. Now, there is evidence to show, and, and Colin will unpack this more, that products like shark fin have seen reduced demand in the wake of demand reduction campaigns. Demand reduction campaigns are only successful if the signals from the supply side are clear and unconfusing. The problem at the moment is that we have Southern African governments promoting trade and saying we have a stockpile that's available and that makes the credibility of demand reduction campaigns highly questionable and consumers are understandably confused. You're telling us not to consume and at the same time you're saying that you want to open up the trade legally. Uh, and speculators are loving it because they have every incentive to acquire as much stock as they possibly can now so that they could then drip feed the market and earn monopoly rents. It's not true that demand reduction campaigns don't work, it's just that they're undermined by confusing supply side signals. The other important thing to understand about demand reduction campaigns is that you have to help consumers make the connection between the consumption of the product and the result in the wild. Now, a lot of consumers don't understand that their purchase is literally resulting in a dead rhino. And when you help consumers make that connection, uh, it, it stands. But it's, it's not likely to happen if you have confusing supply side signals. The other important thing uh, is that you, you can't assume that uh, that flooding the market will somehow result in reduced prices. And there's just no evidence to suggest that that's true um, because the reason why demand might expand in the face of a legal trade is because the stigma effect currently in operation may be reduced. In other words, consumers who will not buy as a result of a ban will be incentivized to buy if the ban is lifted. And so the idea that a legal trade will solve all ills can't work precisely because the stigma effect will be eradicated and the stigma effect is supplementary to demand reduction campaigns and so if you remove the stigma effect demand reduction can't work. But it's important to get the understanding of all the variables together before we have these debates and typically pro traders don't want to talk about these intricacies. Yeah, it's a very easy one line. Demand reduction campaigns don't work. Very easy. But when you have mixed messaging, it can't work. Mm. But when there is no mixed messaging, like what happened in Taiwan in 1993, there was a demand reduction campaign driven by the, the Taiwanese government. It stopped within one year. And today it is still in effect. There is no real material consumption of rhino horn in Vietnam, uh, in Taiwan today. And likewise with the shark fin. There's unambiguous, you don't have uh, countries supplying shark fins saying maybe trade with us or don't, there is a clear message, do not consume shark fin and as a result the consumption is going down.